Imagine that you come from a low-income family and you live in a small apartment that is located in a dense urban environment. Now, if you're a child, most probably you're sharing the room with one of your siblings and the only place where you can have some time out or some break is to go outside and to chill somewhere. But you go outside and you see that there is no any kind of decent place, urban public space, that can offer you a restorative time. But whenever you go to work or to school, you know that there is one beautiful place that you can chill there, but it's always fenced because it is private. And you question, damn, how come there is no nice public spaces in the neighborhood, but there is plenty of private empty spaces? These kind of spaces, our friends, in stripping architecture, we call them captured urban spaces. You are watching Stripping Architecture and today we will be stripping the visible architecture in order to reveal the captured urban spaces and to encourage you to recognize the social and civil value of these spaces. Because believe it or not, in certain contexts, you have right on these spaces even though they are private. After watching this video, you'll see how much of these spaces are in your neighborhood and you haven't seen them. Stay tuned. Probably you have heard about the rule of 330-300. Three trees away from your home, 30% of green canopy within the neighborhood, and a green space within 300 meter radius from where you live. Right now, we are in one of Brussels' most dense urban areas, and we will explore this rule together, the 330-300. Remember well, huh? We start with the first rule, three. Let's take this house, for example. We don't see any tree nearby except at the end of the street, so it fails. A second rule, 30% green canopy covering the neighborhood. Well, help us in this, we don't see any green canopy in this street. And the third rule is a green space within 300 radius. We trust us, we have searched the whole neighborhood, we couldn't find and open green spaces within 300 meter radius. For sure, there are a lot of open spaces and waterfronts around this neighborhood, which are quite not close by, but there are, for example, no such uh, small pocket parks where you can sit, relax, and they are very close to where you live. Let's be honest about this fact. During the working days, which are five days out of seven in the week, having a little pocket park in proximity from you it is way nicer and convenient than having a large green park which is 10 blocks far from you. If we take a deeper look around, we will find plenty of underused private green spaces in the neighborhood, like this one right here. As we see here, a very nice, well minted private green space. Trees, nice lawns, but it's totally underused. Even in summertime, you see barely nobody is hanging around here. Why? Of course, it's private. There is no urban infrastructure to hang. For example, bench. And the space is not accessible after six o'clock when the shop is closed. Do you see this giant wall? There is another private, well-maintained green space. It belongs to a big corporate bank. For sure, it's used during the day for smoking, maybe coffee drinking, summertime maybe a little bit more, but again, it's very privately used and not accessible for public at all. We remember the rule of 330-300. We are in one of the streets which this rule does not apply at all. We have very dense urban block on one side and on the other side captured private green spaces. In order to apply this rule, we have two scenarios. The first one is to retackle the street, kick out some cars and plant trees and make more greenery and public space, or rethink and reopen the captured private green spaces to be used by the resident of the neighborhood. Either both, we have a very striking question. Why such a captured private green space is always surrounded by giant walls, monoliths, fences, cameras? 
Why? To protect the insects or deny public access? Of course, there is no porosity or any communication even with the neighborhood. Visually speaking, eh? we are standing again in a very residential, dense urban area. On this left side, there is a giant block, pure residential, and in the inside court has a green private space. This private space is used by the kids who are inhabiting the block. We do understand the concept of private green space. It has indeed a very big advantage where kids can play in private space with pure security. In reality, those kids on the other side, they are captured and they don't have access to green spaces. Meanwhile, their neighboring kids have access to private green spaces. Isn't it twisted reality? Open spaces are not inclusive for big corporate businesses or private residential blocks. It can be found in a public building. And that's another level of discussion. For example, in this building here, we have found a captured open space that is totally not used. It doesn't have even doors to access it from the employees, like the case, if you remember, in the corporate bank. This captured open space, which belongs to a public building, has a huge potential for the neighborhood. For example, dismantle the fence, create more greenery, kids, little pocket park. This is what we are talking about, literally. And there is no this question of privacy, pub no, it's public. And finally, we found the extreme case of captured spaces. You know, what is this? It's a municipality public park, but it's closed in front of the public and it's captured. Why? Nobody knows. For some mysterious reasons, the municipality has decided to close it in front of the public and it's inaccessible since a couple of years. Can you imagine such an infrastructure which is located in a very dense urban area, people, kids can't access it. And finally, we are here with the final point. As you can see on the illustration on your right side, we want to emphasize on the fact that pocket parks are very important for many different things in our life, mostly about the mental health. And we do respect the private spaces, but we have to distinguish two types of private spaces. It's a corporate private space and personal private space. In different kind of urban context, the corporate private space does not have the full sovereignty. In other words, we need to know that these spaces can be put on the table for discussion and for potential opening and for public usage. Thank you very much for staying with us. As always, subscribe, share, comment, and see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.